Hey everybody, welcome back to another Gravity Ace devlog. This tutorial shows how I do screen shake in Godot Engine for my game Gravity Ace. I walk you through all the code line by line. I also cover three different algorithms for implementing the actual screen shake and include a demo project that you can download from GitHub to use in your own games. Let's get started. So in our demo project here, um, you have a top level root node with a script, which I'll show you in a second. And this runs the project or the game. Uh, there's a camera 2D, which is critical for this, obviously, because we're talking about camera shake. There's several labels and controls here, which I use for controlling the intensity and duration and the shake type in the demo. And I'll show you what values are in there and how those are used. Uh, quit button. There's the sprite itself, which is the anvil and hammer here. A particle system which emits when the hammer strikes, a animation player which controls all of this, and an audio stream player for playing the sound effect that goes along with it. Uh, it's important that your sound effects and visual effects uh, mesh well with the shake uh, to really sell it. If you have just the shake or just the sound effects alone, it doesn't quite work as well. It's not, it doesn't have the impact that you'd like it to have. But when they're all three combined together, you get a really cool effect. Let's take a quick look at the animation player because that's what's driving this game right here. Uh, there's the anvil frame by frame animation. Uh, there's a function called track, which calls a shake method on the game script right here. Uh, and then there's an audio clip that gets played. So when this goes through, you see the hammer, it strikes, it calls this function, plays the sound effect, and then it resets. And this animation loops, uh, so it just plays over and over again. Let me just show it to you real quick. Just like that. So what is this script? Uh, well, first of all, there's two scripts here. One is for the game and one is the shake script, which I'll show you in a second. But the game script is very, very simple. Yours is obviously going to look a little different than mine because you're making an actual game. Uh, so this one, all it does is plays the animation for the anvil, which is, I called hit, and that just starts the animation running. It'll loop on its own. When that shake function gets called in the animation player, this is what it does. It gets the intensity, duration, and shake type from those controls. This is the intensity control. This is the duration control, those two sliders. And this is the type, which is the uh, that little option box that you saw. Uh, this guy right here. It emits the particles, uh, uh, those little sparkles, sparks that you saw. And then it does this magic function right here. It calls something called shake.shake .shake with the intensity, duration, and type that we got from these, uh, these variables here. In your game, you might you know, hard code these values uh, depending on the type of shake that you want. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo, it's getting it from these controls. So what is this shake here is what is called a auto load or a singleton. And if you look in your project settings, you can take any script in your game. There's an auto load tab here and you can take any script in your game. And in this case, I took shake. Uh, let me erase this actually. Uh, you can take any script in your game. I took shake right here and this is the path to the script. This is the name. And when you add it to your auto load tab here, you end up with shake. Here's the path and it's enabled and you can have as many of these as you like. And what happens with these is when you run your game, all of these singletons are automatically loaded auto load. They're all automatically loaded and they stay alive throughout the entire course of the game. And you can access each one by its name. So in this case, I can access all the functions in this script with this name. Uh, so that script has several different functions in it, but one of the functions in it is called shake. So I access the singleton dot shake, and then I can call its, uh, add its parameters there and call this function anywhere I like at any time in any of my code, anywhere in the game, and it will just work. Pretty cool. Uh, auto loads are pretty cool. So what is shake? Let's take a look. So don't be intimidated. There's nearly a hundred lines here, but a lot of it is comments and it's actually really simple. And I'm gonna walk you through it step by step here. So this whole script, its only purpose in life is to manage the screen shake itself. 
And to do that, it needs a couple of variables. One is the intensity of the shake, one is the duration of the shake, and one is the type of shake. And I have a little enum here with the three different types of shake I'm going to show you. Uh, in your actual game, you'll probably only use one or another, uh, so you wouldn't need this uh, enum. Uh, but in my case, you know, this because this is a demo, I wanted to show you the three different types, so I added this. Uh, and then there's a noise variable, which we use for the noise type of shake. Again, if you don't use the noise shake in your game, you don't need this part. So the ready function, just like any other node in your game, when an auto load gets loaded, it calls its ready function. And in the ready function, uh, I just set up the noise. Uh, the noise is a uh, open simplex noise, which is kind of a smooth, continuous noise. Uh, you typically see this type of thing used for creating height maps, for example. Um, I'm not going to get into it. You can read more about open simplex noise, but you can basically change these parameters a little bit and get slightly different noise. You can change the shape of the noise, and ultimately that will affect the character of the uh, shake that you get out of it as well. Then there's the meat of this. So the first thing is my public API, and this is that shake function that we called from here, shake.shake. .shake. So I'm calling shake on the singleton, calling the shake method, which is this guy right here. And you pass in the intensity and duration and the type. Uh, there's a default value here. If you don't pass in the type, it'll just select type random. Uh, so this is where you would um, add some configuration in your game. If you want the player to be able to turn off shake, this is a good place to put it. Um, if the player doesn't want shake, you can set the intensity to zero artificially, and then nothing will happen when the shake comes. Um, how you do that is up to you. You're going to manage your configuration settings differently than I am, and you know we can we can do a tutorial on configuration settings later. But right now, let's just focus on shake. Uh, so what this does, pretty simply, is it takes the intensity, duration, and type and assigns it to those variables that we saw up at the top of the script here. And it only does that if the new intensity and duration are more intense or longer and longer than the current shake. So if you've called shake twice in a row very quickly and one shake is already happening, if the second shake isn't bigger, then it ignores it. And that's it. That's all it does is it sets up those variables so that this can work. So the process, again, just like any other node, this process script runs every frame. And all it's doing is it's looking for, has have these variables been set? So the first thing it does is it gets the current camera. And you, again, your game is going to be different than this. Uh, how you keep track of your cameras is going to be different than the way other people do it in this demo i know that the camera is right here so i just get the current tree the current scene and i get the camera 2d node in this game scene i can't just say dollar camera 2d because this shake singleton isn't part of this game tree it just exists out in the void on its own so what you do is in the singleton i can say get the whole scene tree get the current scene and then find the node camera 2D in that current scene, which happens to be game. So I've got the camera. Then I check, should we be shaking? Is the duration still greater than zero? If the duration runs down to zero, and I update that down here, if the duration runs down to zero, then what it does is just puts the camera back, centers it, resets everything, changes the intensity and duration to zero, and then it quits out of this. So once the camera duration, camera shake duration runs down to zero, it just stops shaking and quits. Now, if there is still time left on this duration, then the first thing it does is it tries to reduce it a little bit. So it takes the delta value, which is the time that it took to draw this frame, and uh, subtracts that from the camera shake duration. So this will eventually get down to zero and the, and the shake will stop. Uh, and this is frame rate independent because the delta value will be smaller if the frame rate is faster. It'll be bigger if the frame rate is slower. So this this duration is specified in seconds, not in frames or anything like that. So we keep track of the camera shake duration. And then we know we should be shaking here because we haven't run down the timer yet. So it creates an offset variable. It sets it to zero initially. This is a vector two. And then I have my three different types of shake. 
So depending on the type of shake, I'm going to set the offset a little bit differently. So let's take the simplest one, random shake. Literally all it does, it just takes a random vector and multiplies it by the camera shake intensity. So that camera shake intensity, whatever it is, it's just going to take some random vector and multiply it. And that gives you the offset. So the camera will just literally jiggle around randomly. Now, if you're using this type, sine wave based shake, then it's going to do something slightly different. It's going to create the offset vector, but in this case, it's going to use sine waves and it's going to base those sine waves on this um, operating system function here. This is built into the engine and it gets, just keeps track of how long the game has been running in milliseconds. I use this value here for the X coordinate of the offset and I use this value here for the Y uh, coordinate of the offset. And I have these scaling factors here that are a little different. They're a little couple of magic numbers and it just makes sure that the X coordinate sine wave and the Y coordinate sine wave aren't the exact same sine wave. Otherwise you end up with kind of a weird looking, um, a weird looking shake. You don't want to have any patterns that you can notice. You know, you want it to appear random, even though it's not really random and then multiply all that by the camera shake intensity. There's another magic number here. Uh, I chose these magic numbers because they looked good. You can choose different magic numbers for your game, whatever, whatever feels good to you. The third type of shake is this noise based shake, and it's using that noise that we generated up here. And this noise only gets generated once, and then it just gets reused over and over again. So there's uh, several different functions on here. I'm using this get noise one D, which just takes one parameter and gives me a value back. So in this case, I'm using that time again, um, and I get the noise X value, and then I do the same thing for the noise Y, but I offset it by 100 units. Uh, that just, again, makes sure that I'm not getting the exact same noise value for both values. And then I put those two values into, again, the offset vector multiplied by the camera shake intensity. Again, magic numbers here, adjust them to taste, you know, and same thing with the uh, noise generation parameters, adjust those to taste as well. Then uh, just take this offset value that I've created and assign it to camera offset. And that literally just moves the camera by this offset amount. And let's take another look at the, the demo running and I'll show you how these parameters work. So you can adjust the intensity, obviously, and if you lower the intensity, the shake is going to go a little bit smaller. If you make it bigger, it's going to be a more intense shake. Uh, you can change the duration of the shake from very, very short to very, very long. And let's leave it long here and very high so that we can see the effect of this shake type. So you can see, you know, looking at this, the random shake is like it says on the tin, it's pretty random. Uh, you're getting an offset that has no connection with the previous offset. It's just random. And I like it. I like this actually because it's it's simple, uh, effective. It, I think it looks great. Other people prefer something more continuous. So take a sine wave, for example. And what you see here is it's pretty subtle, but you can tell that the, um, the camera doesn't jump around as much and its position kind of moves smoothly from one area, one position to the next, and you get this more continuous uh, type of, um, of shake. Uh, some people prefer that, you know, it's up to you. Noise does a very similar thing where it's continuous, but instead of using sine waves, it uses this pre-generated noise function. Again, um, this one's kind of neat because you can change the character of the shake by changing the noise that you've generated. You can even use textures for the noise if you want to. So that about covers it. Um, I'll post this project on GitHub. I'll include a link in the description below. If you liked this, uh, if you thought it was helpful, if you want to use it in your own project, go ahead. It's MIT licensed. And let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this, if it was helpful, or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.